In this video, I'm gonna take you from hitting iron shots like this. Oh. Ooh, that was pretty awful. Good luck getting up and down from there and get you to hit more flushed, ripped iron shots into the middle greens like this one. Good shot. So I've managed to hit a great drive down this 13th hole. I'm right smack bang in the middle of the fairway. Green is out there, flag looks appealing, ready for me to hit a great shot. How frustrating is it to hit that drive and then follow it with a thin, a top, or even a fat iron shot? Really demoralizing, knocks your confidence. So I call this the 60, 60, 100 drill. The great thing about this is you can do it next time you play. It doesn't really require any practice, and I guarantee it's gonna help you with your ball striking. So it's all to do with kind of how you move your body and your weight, and it's really a concept that's gonna help you with strike. So when I set up, I've selected an eight iron here for this shot. I want you to set up and feel like you've got 60% of your weight into your lead side, but I'm doing that with my knees and my hips. I'm not using my upper body. So I take my knees, my hips, and I just put a little bit more weight into that side. So I feel around about 60% here, 40% here. Now the idea, the feeling, is that as you make your backswing, you're going to keep 60% of your weight or your pressure on your lead leg. So at the top of the golf swing, I'm still feeling 60. As I finish the golf swing, I want to feel like 100% of that is on my lead leg. So it's 60, 60, 100. Now, what this actually does is it gets you to rotate and stay centered over the golf ball. If you did this and I could measure the pressure, which we can do with technology, I 100% guarantee that you would be taking your pressure and you would be moving into your trail side and you'd be moving into your lead side, which is actually the reality of what we want. So this isn't gonna be accurate, but it's a great feeling. And why does it help? Well, so many golfers try and get their weight onto this back leg and that creates this kind of lateral shift. And it's really hard from here to get back into an impact position. The number of golfers I've seen on the golf course who have too much weight back at impact. And it's that that gives us the fats and the thins. So set up, 60. I'm gonna try and keep 60, finish with 100. The quickest way to get improvements with your iron shots is actually to change ball position. It's so often overlooked. It's such an easy, simple change, but it can make the world a difference. If you get your ball position wrong, it's gonna make it very difficult to hit good, solid golf shots. I've got a seven iron, so what is the ideal ball position? Well, we're gonna go through this in a couple of stages. I'm gonna give you a base to work from, but then I'm gonna try and make this kind of more individual to you, the golfer. So with my seven iron, I'm really looking for that ball to be just forward of center. So if I was to draw a line from the club back to my heels, I'd want that ball fractionally closer to my lead heel than it would be for my trail heel. And that would be with a seven iron. Yes, it would be different for other clubs. Now, this is always the sort of base, the starting point, kind of a rough guide. And for the majority of golfers, that would be really, really good. However, ball position can be individual to you. Think about how my golf club works around my body. It works on an arc. So when the club is target side of the ball, my club is traveling more to the left. And when it's pre-impact, it's traveling more out to the right. So I can use ball position to help me with a specific swing fault or swing change. So if I'm someone who overdraws the golf ball, that would be me, my path is too much out to the right. So if I set myself up and have the ball, maybe just one ball further forward than that standard, that's actually gonna help my club path kind of not be as much out to the right and actually start to straighten out a little bit. So when I play golf, my ball position tends to be a fraction further forward, helps me hit straighter shots. If you're a fader of the golf ball, you're gonna do the opposite. You're gonna push the ball a little bit further back. So there's two messages here. Number one, ball position incredibly important. Get it right for your game and it's gonna unlock some better golf. The second message is, it doesn't have to be the same as your playing partners or the same as what that video told you your ball position should be. It can be individual to you. And the better the golfer, the more that they would actually play around with ball position to help them hit better golf shots and actually control the curve. So for me, on this one, I'm gonna take my standard position and I'm just gonna push it forward just a fraction because I know that gives me a greater chance of hitting a straight shot. 15th hole, par three, playing 185 yards from the marker. It's actually a little bit shorter than that on the watch due to where the tees are located. Take a look at where that flag is. Super far left on the green. Now, that is not a flag to mess with. That brings us on to this really, really important tip 
which is to think about your shot patterns. I know that you're going to be thinking, Chris, this is really boring. I don't want to think of shot patterns. I just want to go up flags and be aggressive. It's way more fun. This is the one tip that can actually have the biggest effect on your score. So if you're looking to lower your scores, please, please, please do this. I have to stand here with my seven iron and think, if I was going to hit 100 shots on the range, where would they all land? They wouldn't land in exactly the same position. I'd love it if they did, but there's going to be a dispersion. Now that dispersion probably fits onto that green. So if I aimed out to the right of the flag into the middle of the green, of those 100 shots, the majority of them would be on the green. But if I aimed at that flag, suddenly look where that dispersion is. Some would go in the bunker, some would miss the green. I'm going to hit poorer shots or I'm going to get poorer results just simply because my aim was too aggressive. So think about that. Think about aiming your shots on the green so that even your average shots would leave you putting. The last thing I want to do here is go at that flag, land it in the bunker and blame my golf swing. Because if that was the case, it wouldn't be my golf swing. It would be where I aimed, which was at fault, not my golf swing. So I want you to think about your shot patterns. I call it plan for 100 and focus on one. When I'm planning the shot out, I have to plan for 100 shots. When I've selected my target, which on this hole is into the middle of the green, now I'm going to go through my routine and I'm going to focus on that one shot that I want. Now we've got to hit this shot, which brings us nicely onto our next tip. We can't talk about improving your iron play without talking about setup and specifically balance. Good, great iron players all have great body movements. They move their body exceptionally well. And it's just really difficult to do that if you're not set up in balance. So if I set up this golf ball and I'm sitting with the weight on my heels, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to make a golf swing which is very armsy and I don't really engage my body at all. Almost impossible to hit great golf shots. Or if I've got my weight too much out onto my toes, the chances are through the goal swing, I'm going to sort of sit back into my feet to try and get myself into balance. Either of those is just going to give you pretty poor inconsistent results. There's two checkpoints I'd love you to have to make sure you're in good balance. One is the back of your armpits, and the second one is the sort of tailbone, if you like. So if I set myself up to this, I've got a seven iron. If I simply hold this position and take my golf club and just position it at the back of my armpits here, that golf club should fall just in front of my knees. And you can see that it does that there. If I've got my weight too much on my toes, you can see there's a big gap now. Or if I'm sitting too much into my heels, which is probably the more common fault, you can see that golf club is behind my knees. So I've got to make sure that that golf club falls just in front of my knees. And if it continued down, it would probably hit me right at the sort of start of my toes. That tells me my upper body is tilted over the ball enough and it allows my arms to hang pretty straight down. The second checkpoint is that tailbone. If I hung a golf club from my tailbone here, that should fall around about three to four inches behind my heels. And again, that's gonna tell me that I've got good weight distribution. But as soon as you start to pos position, I should say, your body correctly and your balance is good, you're gonna find that your golf swing feels so much more dynamic and you're able to rotate through more aggressively in balance. It's a par three, so I'm gonna tee my ball up. But where I tee it, it's actually really important. I'm gonna be quite specific. I'm gonna tee my ball up right here. And there's a reason why I've teed it up there. I'm gonna to come to that in a moment. I'm sure you know that if you wanna hit solid iron shots, you need a descending blow. Your attack angle has got to be negative. You've got to basically hit the ball followed by the ground. That's why we see all the best players take divots. If you're struggling with your iron shots, your low point is most likely before the ball causing your fats and your thins. I've teed it right behind an old divot that's here. So when I set up, I'm actually going to be thinking and focusing on that divot. I want that to have my attention, my focus, not necessarily the golf ball. And what that does, by having that divot as my focus, if that little fly moves out the way, it helps me get my low point target side of the ball. It helps me extend my arms and my club past the golf ball. Where you look, really, really powerful. It will be different for driver compared to irons, but I've had so much success on the golf course, and I know you've most likely heard this bit of advice before, but looking target side of the ball is such a game changer for so many golfers. It takes a bit of getting used to, but think about where you tee up your golf ball. Be smart, use what's on the ground, and if you can change your focus, you should be able to strike it better. So now I've got a, a better aim based on my shot dispersion. I'm looking at the divot, Everything is set for me to hit this ball into the middle of the green.
This is the 16th fairway. I'm around about 150 yards out from the green, and if you've hit a good tee shot, this is kind of where you'll end up. But follow me, have a look at this fairway. This, quite a severe downslope. If I was here, the ball would be quite a lot below my feet. Uh, what about if I stand over here? Well, again, there's a, a slight depression. If I was here, the ball would be slightly above my feet. Lots of different undulations and slopes and hollows, and you've got to be able to deal with those. Golf isn't played on a perfectly level lie, but very often your practice is done on those perfect situations. That's not actually going to help you when you get out on the golf course. So come and have a look at the situation I've set myself up here. I've got three golf balls, and all of these three golf balls are teed up. This one is kind of how I would tee a seven iron up. This one obviously a little bit higher, and this one is kind of close to where a, a driver would be. So how do I kind of structure my practice so that when I come out into the course, I can actually deal with all of these undulations? Well, my golf club has to basically regulate where it is relative to the ground. If the ball is above my feet, the golf club has to arrive much more above my feet, like it, where the ball is. If the ball's below my feet, I have to be able to regulate that. So I need to be able to control the height of my swing relative to me. So you can kind of see where we're going with this. I've got to try and hit three solid golf shots to the green in the distance from those different tee heights. Obviously this one is going to be fairly normal, but then I've got to deliver the club a little higher and a little higher. And I'm not thinking technically, that's the key here. I'm just looking at the golf ball and trying to react to that. If I can get good at this little exercise, uh, this is the key. When you go on the course and play with slopes and people say, how do you deal with ball above, ball below? You don't really overthink it. You just kind of look at the ball and you react. That's what the best players in the world do. So I adjusted to all of those different tee heights through skill. And because I've developed that when I'm practicing, slopes don't really give me a challenge because I just set up the ball, react to where the ball is, and I get a good result. If you're not practicing your skill development, you're really going to struggle on slopes. Every golf course I've ever seen has got slopes. You need to be able to practice that way to deal with them a lot better. Great iron players generally have pretty good rotation through the golf ball. We're talking about the body here, so they all pivot and rotate really well. That's incredibly important because what it enables you to do is keep your arm structure pretty solid, allows you to deliver the handle forward and gets you in that really nice kind of wide position post impact. How many of you have videoed your golf swing and post impact you've seen kind of things like this? Elbow separated, club really close. Well, it's really down to lack of rotation. My hips and my chest are kind of still pointing down towards the golf ball. So if you want to control the strike and you want to hit your iron shots better, you've got to be rotating through. Now, there's two ways you're going to do this. Number one is a little drill. And then the second one is you're actually just thinking a little bit about where your focus lies. We'll talk about that in a moment. So I'm gonna get you to take your golf club, grip it right the way down, almost near the club head end. And as I take a setup, the grip or the club shaft is gonna be in contact with my lead side. I want you to think about when that would make contact with you again. If I have a lack of turn, I'm gonna feel that in contact with my side, probably pre-ball. So the club hasn't really arrived at the golf ball yet and I can feel that club in contact with me. I want to rehearse, can I get to impact and even kind of through impact before the club contacts me? Hopefully you can see that it's still away from my side. The only way I can do that is by rotating through and keeping my hips and my chest turning. That allows me to get this nice extended position. Now the reality is at speed that club will make contact with you, but notice where it is. It's a good distance past the ball. So I can work to this point Body's rotated, chest has turned, grip is in contact with my side here. So that's my checkpoint. Can I turn and get the contact in this area, not this area? That early release, lack of body turn, is what's going to give you those really crumpled looks down here. Now, we've already spoken in this video about where to place your focus, target side of the ball. That's absolutely fine. But so many golfers that struggle with body rotation do it because they're obsessed with the golf ball. They're obsessed with hitting the golf ball and keeping their eye on it and not taking their eye off it. It stifles your body rotation. So yes, I'd love you to look target side of the ball because that helps so many. But in the back of my mind, as I'm hitting this shot, I'm trying to land the club target side of the ball, but I'm trying to picture where I'm going to be at the end. I'm going to be taller. I'm going to be facing the target. I'm going to be hopefully watching my ball sail into the middle of the green. So make sure you're thinking about your end position. You're not obsessed with the ball. You worry about strike and it's gonna really affect your body rotation. Now there aren't many drills or exercises which 
can work and can help every single golfer out there. However, this is one that it can. Do this at the drive range. Incorporate this into your practice because it is absolutely brilliant. It's gonna teach you impact. It's gonna teach you structure through impact. And it's ultimately gonna teach you how to deliver the club with your irons. You're gonna be taking a mid iron. I've got myself a seven iron here. You're gonna take a, a pretty standard setup. So as you would normally, but trying to keep your head pretty still, you're gonna push your weight onto your lead side. So there's gonna be a little bit of lateral shift and you're gonna take the handle of the golf club forwards. We're kind of trying to preset where you should be impact. Now, once I'm in this position, the idea is to make some little swings where I keep my weight forwards. So I'm gonna swing this club, you know, no more than around about hands at chest high, land the club target side of the ball. That's my focus. Squeeze my elbows together, finish with the club and my hands as far away from me as I can get them. Now, I appreciate you can't see the ball flight, but you're looking for something which is pretty low, so that probably went maybe 10 to 12 feet high. It only carried about 60, 70 yards, but I can tell you, came right out the middle. The club landed in the right place. It felt really solid, and you can get all that feedback even though the ball's only going 30, 40 yards. So many of you, unfortunately, with your irons, are gonna have impacts which look like this, hands back, post impacts that look like this, where the weight's back and the hands are forward. So this little exercise is brilliant because all it's really doing is teaching you a great impact position, and it's teaching you how to consistently land the club.